This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. I'm going to try to get through all four of these problems in this one video. I'm not sure I'll accomplish that, but we're going to try. So we want to write a quadratic in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero where a, b, and c are integers and they do not have a common factor greater than one. So I suggest you put the video on pause and try these on your own. Try to use the most efficient method and then go ahead and watch how I do it. All right, here's the first one. Now since I have a fraction, I think it's easier doing this one the uh, way we did it on the very first video and remove the um, fraction. So this means x equals two-sevenths or x equals negative three. So for this one, x equals two-sevenths, I'm going to multiply both sides by seven. So we eliminate fractions right off the bat. So we have seven x equals two, which means seven x minus two equals zero. And that will be one of our factors. And here all we have to do is add three to both sides. So there's our other factor. And then we multiply those together to get our answer. x plus three times seven x minus two equals zero. And we're going to do the FOIL method. x times 7x is 7x squared. Outside is minus 2x. Inside plus 21x and minus 6 equals 0. 7x squared plus 19x minus 6 equals 0. Now the only way to know for sure if that's correct is to check my answers. I'm not going to spend the time on this video doing that, but you would plug in two-sevenths for x and make sure that the left side is going to be zero. The other thing you can do is start with 7x squared plus 19x minus 6, factor it, and solve, and of course, yeah, you would just be going backwards, right? <laughs> right, here's our next one. Now, for this one, you could do it by factoring, or you could use the sum and product. I usually, when I see radicals or imaginary numbers, I do the sum and product. So let's see, what's the sum? The sum is three square roots of five plus negative three square roots of five. Hmm, that's zero, that's easy. The product is three square roots of five times negative three square roots of five which is negative nine times five, right? Because three times three is nine. There's the negative sign. Square root of five times square root of five is five. So it's a negative 45. The formula is x squared minus the sum times x plus the product. And of course, when I say the sum, the sum of the solutions and the product of the solutions. So we're going to get x squared well, minus zero times x is just going to be zero, but I'll just put that in here for a minute, plus the product. So plus negative 45 is just minus 45 equals zero. So we want to write that as x squared minus 45 equals zero. Again, you could check by plugging in three root five, making sure that is equal to zero. You plug that in for x and then also plug in negative three root five. Just want to remind you, I could have done this the same way as I did number one. You didn't have to use the sum and product. All right, here's the next one. This has fractions in it. So we could do the sum and product as well. Just be careful with the fractions here. So I'm going to do the sum. I usually do the sum when I have a common denominator because that's easy. So that's why this isn't so hard to do, where in the very first problem I had, I didn't have a common denominator. So two-thirds i minus two-thirds i is going to be zero. You're starting to notice a pattern here. And the product is two i over three times negative two i over three. So that's negative four i squared over 
3 times 3, right? 9. Be careful here. So we have negative 4. I squared is negative 1. So I've got 4 ninths. Alright, so remember it's x squared minus the sum times x plus the product equals 0. And again, we've got a sum of 0, so we know this middle term is not going to be there. So let's write our answer down here. We're going to have x squared, we're not, we're not going to put the minus 0 x this time, but plus the product is just plus 4 ninths equals 0. But these are not integers, right? 4 ninths is not an integer, so you can rectify that by multiplying everything by 9. 9 times x squared is 9x squared. 9 times 4 ninths, the 9's will cancel, right? Which is the whole idea. So this will give us 9x squared, and can you see how this is just going to be 4? So I'm going to write 4, and 9 times 0 is only going to be 0. So there is a quadratic equation with solutions 2i over 3, or you can call that 2 thirds i, same thing, and negative 2 thirds i. And you could check it by plugging those in as well. Or you could try solving this by taking the square root of both sides and you'll see you'll get those answers. All right, last one. This definitely I'm going to use the sum and product. So we've got sum. Now hopefully you notice when all of these look exactly the same, they're conjugates, right? Minus 3i and then there's a plus 3i. Those always start canceling. So we should just get the 5 plus 5, but I'm going to write it all out. 5 minus 3i plus 5 plus 3i gives you 10. You're going to just get an integer. And if they're conjugates, because the, the conjugates means this term and this term are opposite. So when you add them together, you're going to get a 0. The product, 5 minus 3i times 5 plus 3i. Okay, that's going to end up with a difference of t squares, so 5 times 5 is 25 minus 9i squared. Now I know some of you go directly to plus 9 because this i squared is going to change that always to a plus 9, but I am just writing out all the steps for now. So some people go directly to 25 plus 9, and that's 34. So that's the product. So we're ready to plug it in. x squared minus the sum. Now the sum is 10. So we put 10x plus the product plus 34 equals 0. And you could check this by plugging in 5 minus 3i. And that is really difficult to do, but you know it's good practice with your multiplying and squaring things. Um, or you could just solve this equation. Use the quadratic formula or complete the square and then take the square roots of both sides and you should get 5 minus 3i and 5 plus 3i. Okay, so that's our series of videos on finding an equation, a quadratic equation if we know two of the roots. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.